looking for you. So it should follow. Yeah, very there good. Go. Okay. Yeah, this is nice. All right. So um, the topic here is middle to high school, um, taking it up a notch. So uh, I take it a lot of you guys have children that are in middle school. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have kids in oh ninth grade. Ninth grade. Yes. Ninth grade. All of you ninth grade parents? No, eighth grade. Eighth grade, eighth grade. and then the rest of you ninth grade parents. So um, we have Miss Wolf and Miss Dixon. Miss Dixon is from Valencia High School. Miss Wolf is from El Dorado. And then we have another presenter, Frank Perez. He's from Esperanza High School. And um, they, they, are, um, they are here to talk to you about, um, I take it, it's, it's the homework and the workload. And, everything. And, and We're going to talk about everything awesome. in 45 minutes. Yes. Very good, in 45 minutes. Yes. So we, we have this on, on this, this, this Google presentation that we're going to do later. You're going to see they're going to be handing off this key fob as well. So we've got a little technology going on. So yeah. I'll let you take it away. Cool, Thank OK. You. Now, the trick for me is going to be not looking at myself on the screen. It's like walking by a mirror, checking your hair. It's going to be. So I'm glad you guys are here tonight. Thank you for coming on a school night. I know dinner, homework, all that stuff, it's hard to get out. So we respect your time, and we hope we can give you a lot of good information tonight. You don't need to take notes or anything tonight. We did the notes for you. Um, and we'll take questions at the end. So if you think of anything, you wonder anything, this is just a real open, honest venue for you guys. So you can leave a little bit more confident and hopefully a little bit more secure in what your child's experience is going to be like making that transition from middle school to high school. So I think the first thing we need to do is we need to think of our own high school experience. And that oftentimes comes back, especially if this is your first child going into high school, your own high school experience. Are they going to have the same experience? Are they not going to have the same experience? So I thought I would take you guys back a little bit. I know this takes me back. Do you remember high school? Oh, yeah. No, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Let's see, maybe this does. There we go. Start again. Well, they, they've seen this. Oh, never mind. Remember this? So high school dances are exactly the same. They're a frightening <laughs> place to be. I've chaperoned many. You got the kids on the dance floor. You got the kids watching the dance floor teachers walking around. talk about tonight we're going to talk about some things that have changed and some things that haven't okay that's still a high school dance we still have the same groups in high school that we had when we were in high school but some things have drastically changed and if you're in the know for your kids you can help them make the adjustments that they're going to need to make this is my clicker we're here to help so I'm going to show you a picture right now of a very famous person who wouldn't be famous, and he, this is a direct quote from him, without the help of his family. His, when he was a little kid going to Little League, his mom and dad took him to all of his practices, sat down with him, did his homework, um, and today he's Mike Trout. Mike Trout wouldn't be Mike Trout without the support of his family. And even now, as a Major League Baseball player, if you listen to Mike Trout talk about the importance of family, he goes on and on about it. And this is a guy who you know, makes millions of dollars a year doing something he loves. 
And I think sometimes when we get to high school, we think that kids should be on their own. They still need that support. Mike Trout still needs that support. So we, we still need to be there for our kids and be a security for them. So this is what tonight's all about. How can we help our kids? How can we let them have some independence but be a safety blanket just in case they need it? So my name is Amanda Wolf. I'm a teacher at El Dorado High School. I have an interesting job at El Dorado High School. I teach English, but I teach on this very wide spectrum. Um, I teach LA1, which is for freshmen, and I teach every at-risk freshman at El Dorado High School. That's my job. I'm part of the intervention program that our district has for kids that need extra help their freshman year. These are really smart kids who basically hate school. And I am their homeroom, I am their English teacher, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> I also teach on the other end, seniors in high school, who are getting ready to leave high school, and I teach very, very academic classes for those seniors. I teach in the Digital Media Arts Academy at El Dorado, and I also teach college prep. So these are kids who are planning on going to a four-year university and have really ambitious goals. So I can see that evolution of freshman to senior year. Some of them this year were in my class as freshmen, so I can kind of see what works, what doesn't for these kids. I also have uh, three children of my own. And I think that's even more important than teaching. I have three kids. I have an eighth grader at Tuffrey, so I will be where many of you are both this year and next year. Um, I also have a fourth grader at Brookhaven, and I have a preppy care at Brookhaven. So um, I'm a product of the PYL USD. My husband went through the PYL USD. We're firm believers in what this district provides our kids, and we hope you guys are seeing that too. Um, this is the look at the class of 2019. Now this is for freshmen this year. Kind of gives you an idea of how their lives are different than ours. Google has always been there and Googling something is a verb to them. You Google it. I don't know the answer. They get off their phones and they Google it. Okay. They've never licked a posted stamp. The NCAA has always had a precise means to determine a national champion in college football. Now, I have no idea what that means, <laughs> but I figured, okay, this is important. I'm gonna put it in, it's football. The announcement of someone being the first woman to hold a position has only impressed their parents. Cell phones have become so ubiquitous in class that teachers don't know which students are using them to take notes and which are planning a party. It's true, they're tools for class, and now our district even has a bring your own device um, uh, plan at schools where kids are bringing their own devices and they're using them. It's actually making class quite exciting. Uh, fish food has always been available from Ben and Jerry. Playhouse Disney was a place where they could play growing up. They love those characters. 15 nations have always been constructing the International Space Station. The Lion King has always been on Broadway during their lives. Humans have always had the ability to use implanted radio frequency ID chips slightly larger than a grain of rice. TV's always been in such high definition that they could see the pores of actors and the grimaces of quarterbacks. And the proud parents recorded their first steps on camcorders mounted on their shoulders like bazookas. You might remember those. I had one for my oldest. I remember that very well. We are raising kids who are growing up in a time different than when we went to high school. And we have to be up to date on that in order to keep up with them, both as teachers and parents. So I just thought this was great. These are the cool kids in high school when I went to high school. Um, I graduated in, in, in 92. I'm not sure about the when you guys graduated. Um, I, I, I love the quote here by E.E. E. Cummings, though, and this hasn't changed. It takes courage to grow up and become who you really are. And that's ultimately what we want for all of our kids. Our goal is for not the, the graduate high school. That is not our goal for them. Our goal for them is to be independent people who are able to take care of themselves and leave happy, productive lives. And that's also what tonight is about and what the three of us decided when we planned tonight for you. So what does a successful high school student do that may not come naturally to a middle school student? And this is really important because the first quarter of high school, which many of you are experiencing, is often a time of getting the whole middle schoolishness out of the kid. Um, if your child is struggling right now, that is absolutely normal. If they got a progress report recently, that is absolutely normal. First quarter, even first semester, is a big learning curve. So what can we do to help them right away? 
One of the first things is realize what are the expectations of a high school teacher. They expect kids to be on time to class. They expect them to be in their seat when the bell rings. They're expected to have school supplies with them every day, be ready to work from bell to bell. Supplies they should have. They should have lined paper. They should have pencils, two in case one breaks. They don't have to get up and sharpen their pencil. They should have a good er eraser. Um, I would suggest a rubber eraser, not the type on the pencil. Those tend to break off. Um, they should have a black ballpoint pen. They should have a red pen or pencil for corrections. And each teacher on back to school night may present you with a few requests. They may present you with the idea that they may need index cards or calculators or rulers or binders. Um, and you can find all that out on the classroom syllabus, back to school night, or you can also find it out on the teacher websites. Um, if school supplies are a burden for your family, um, contact the teacher. We have um, wonderful people in our community who donate to every school site and we're able to help. Or if you know a family that's having difficulty, reach out to the teachers. We, we've got our means and a way to help you. Um, the most important thing is if a kid's not prepared when they come to class, they cannot participate. And sometimes they're not prepared because they haven't prepared themselves, and other times it's because they can't. So that's really important. You can also model organization for your child. Do you remember these peaches? I remember these drawing all over them and adding stuff to them. And these cool pens with all the different colors, and I would take notes and click and change each color. That, that, plastic smelling, I, I'm sure this was not good for you to smell the inside of this store, but the Hello Kitty with the built-in pencil sharpener on the end, or the scented watercolor markers, your kids don't need any of these. These are the fun school supplies, but your kids don't need those. They really need just the simple, I'm ready to go school supplies. Um, late work, that's a big one in high school and it's something kids get very used to in middle school that trumps them up when they get to high school. Um, there's two types of late work. There's absent work where the child is sick in the nurse's office, maybe they're on a field trip, a family engagement, an athletic event, and then there's truly late work. They just didn't do it. The district does have a policy of two days for missed work due to an absence. And the district also has a policy of accepting late work. Now, maybe not for full credit, but accepting late work to help a kid get ahead if they feel that they are getting behind. Athletes and field trip participants are supposed to check in and get work before they leave. If you have a child who's in a sport and they leave a lot during fifth period if they're in a sport, they need to get into the habit. At lunch, they go see the teacher, I'm leaving, and they check in and get that work. Teachers expect that of our athletes and our participants. According to the newly adopted, it's uh, two years old now, district homework policy, students can get partial credit for late work, but there's two things kids need to do. They need to communicate with their teacher about why the assignment is late in order to get the due due date. This is not a policy where right before grades are due, you bring a bunch of late work, which middle school students are used to doing, and say, here, I will pass the class now. It's not that way in high school. If your child's turning in a lot of late work, they're missing the instruction in class. And the whole point is to get them caught up so that they can get the skills we're teaching. It's not just to assign work, it's to get the skills. And if they're doing late work, they're gonna constantly be going backwards with the skills. Um, another thing, specific guidelines will differ from teacher to teacher. So I would ask a teacher, what's your late work policy? If your child is out more than two days, I strongly suggest you email the teacher. Now, the district policy is more than five days or more, you can contact the counseling department and they'll send out an email to teachers and it's very formal and you'll get out of work. I would strongly suggest that you reach out to the teachers at two days. If you call counseling, they're gonna say their policy is five days. Two days is a lot of school to miss. For most kids, that's gonna be 12 classes that they've missed. So I strongly suggest if they're sick, cold and flu season starting two days, have them go back, call the teacher. Um, if it's a prearranged trip, you can contact attendance and get a contract. This is good for the school and good for you. This contract allows the school to get money for the um, absence. Um, we get paid for student attendance. That money goes right back to your kid because it goes right back into the school district for activities and programs. So we strongly suggest that you um, get, that you contact the attendance office for a contract. It also is an insurance policy for your kid. 
Um, if your kid is absent, a teacher will tell them on the contract, this is the things I want done when you return. Now, the teacher can't add anything after that. It's this is what is due. If you turn this in, you'll be okay when you get back. It's kind of, it's nice for a kid because they have the security of knowing I can do this and I'll be all caught up when I get back and I'm not gonna have a big project sprung on me in addition to that. So it's good for both parties involved. The best way to communicate with most teachers in the school district is through email. The email is really easy. It's the first initial of the teacher and their last name at pylusd.org. If you leave a phone message, expect a slower response time. Um, teachers are with students all day, and oftentimes it'll be a day or two. Whereas email, you're gonna get an email back very quickly from teachers. Whenever you contact a teacher, please be sure to identify your student by name and period. Um, sometimes I'll get a contact and the last name's different, and I have to reply back, I do not know who you are <laughs> or who your child is, so that I can help them. I need to know who we're talking about. This is not a passive experience. Your child has to participate and interact in high school. We're preparing them for college from the minute they walk into that door as ninth graders. And it's difficult. Ninth graders are small, they are immature, they are impulsive. It is still hard for them to sit for 50 minutes. So it is very difficult, but we only have four years with them and we take it very seriously in the PYLUSD at the high schools of getting them ready for a four-year college experience. And it starts in September in the ninth grade. You can always see a teacher if your child is struggling for tutoring or one-on-one -on -one help. If worse comes to worse, remember these are kids and you can always intervene. Don't feel like you need to take a back seat to your kid's education because they're in high school. One of the most frustrating things is when I have a senior who needs some help and I call home and I hear, well, they're 18, they're on their own. No, as many of you know, your kids are gonna need you for a very long time. <laughs> some kids grow up much faster than others and some will need you into their 20s. Being a parent, I'm 40 years old, I'm 41, I just turned 41. I'm 41 years old, I still need my mother and father's advice from time to time. And thank goodness they don't tell me I'm on my own. I still need them. The um, formula that works the best is you and the teacher and the kid all coming together to help the kid. Um, and, and any teacher is available for a conference if you just set it up through the teacher. I thought you would enjoy this. <laughs> I just started communicating with music to my kids. They don't listen to me talking anymore. I just use their songs to get my point across. I read them all the other day. They're just begging me for an iPhone for an hour. Oh, no, 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 no. and drive. It's dangerous. Don't text. Because when I was growing up, I took driver's ed and nobody ever had, the, the, the teacher never stood up in the front of the class and said, now John, boys and girls, after you get your driver's license, don't drive and type. Beyonce. <laughs> open minds, California, open minds. <laughs> she only had 
kids should be like, to the left, to the left. To the left, to the left. Everything you own in a box to the left. <laughs> you must not know about me. You must not know about me. I can make another you in a minute. <laughs> Did you roll your eyes at me? No, you didn't. <laughs> a teenager I got one in June delivered a teenager June 12th and it is amazing I've, I've taught I've taught teenagers for 19 years in our school district having one in your own home is an eye-opening experience it really is you know we were my husband and I are actually taking a parenting class on raising teenagers we're doing it ourselves even though we have helped other people raise their teenagers when it's your own it's a lot different and it was funny, we were at the parenting class um, last week, and um, they asked one of the dads to like kind of mimic what his son would do on the ride home. He says, I'm gonna ask you questions and I want you to be your son. And the first thing the dad did was this. There is a son. He says, okay, how was your day at school? Nah. What'd you do? Nothing. Did you learn anything? No. And I was thinking like, okay, we all have this universal experience. <laughs> Um, whether you have a boy, whether you have a girl, we all have this universal experience. How do we make it successful? Because what we all have in common is we desperately love our children. My children are the most important kids at Brookhaven and Tuffrey. When I call a teacher, I need to call back that day because I'm not going to sleep that night. And I totally get that. And so I hope you feel empowered after tonight that you have a team on your side for that. Go ahead and turn it. I would also um, encourage you to have your kids get involved outside the classroom. The more involved the kid is, the more successful they're going to be. One of the signs of success that we have found is if by the time a kid finishes the first semester of their freshman year, they're plugged into something non-academic. Whether it's a club, whether it's community service, whether they go, they go to a dance, whether they get an elective that's fun for them, whether they're in a sport, there has to be a carrot to why they're going to school besides their academic class. And that's very important. I would encourage your children and you to reach out and see what can my kids get involved in. You can also um, self-monitor and coach your child. Um, I always encourage parents to have their kids self-monitor, especially by the time they're in high school. Your child should be checking their grades on a weekly basis. You can too, but have them be checking their grades. Have them use an agenda for assignments and due dates. Be aware of detentions and Saturdays if they're getting those. Um, self-correct poor behavior and seek positive friendships be aware of who your children are hanging around with um, there's no such thing as missionary friendships there's no such thing as I know all my friends are slackers but I am the good influence no it's usually the other way around um, really encourage your child to make some positive friendships and it shuffles the deck again when they get to high school there's kids from all sorts of feeders coming into our high schools, so it's a great time if your kid has had trouble socially to really mix it up and find some good friends. Yeah. Chain of responsibility is the student, the teacher, and you. And if you work together, it's really going to be a powerful thing. And we believe in the PYLUSD of working together. I love this. I show this to my kids. This is what I want for them in June. He's just learned to ride a bike. You feel alive? I feel, I feel happy of myself. I feel happy of myself too. <laughs> what do you have any words of wisdom? What about for all the other kids trying to learn how to ride their bike? Can you say anything to them? that for all of my students I want at the end of the year for them to go I can do this I can ride the bike I got high school I can do it so here's some more steps for getting through that um, we're gonna go ahead and skip to the next slide um, study habits and Allison from Valencia High School is gonna take that over father father, father. Yeah. reverb it there we go 
it's going to come up um, uh, with my information again in a few slides, but just to introduce myself, I teach at Valencia High School. I'm also a graduate of PYLUSD. I've been in the district for a really long time as a student and now as a teacher. This is my 10th year at Valencia. I teach um, a zero period of mostly avid juniors who are college bound, but many of them are the first in their family to be four year university bound. And I also teach our pre-IB freshmen and our two sections of our IB junior class, juniors. So, uh, effective study habits. We had a, another counterpart, Frank, who is, couldn't be here tonight, um, and we're kind of, he's gonna be the part that I hate, so, <laughs> there we go. Uh, what I wanna say about effective study habits, I know a lot of, um, I, I just had this conversation today with some of my ninth graders. I know you were really successful in middle school, because you're smart and you were able to do a, a lot of things and you were able to keep track of all um, of your classes and now it's high school and even though you have less classes you have probably more commitments and less time to do all of those same things so one of the things I focus on in my class is not just how do we be successful at language arts how can we be su successful in all of our classes how can we develop some study habits that maybe we didn't have time or opportunity to learn in middle school. So talking about things like flashcards and note cards and effective time management with my students. Um, different teachers offer different things. Um, I offer students to come in during my zero period. Many of them um, show up early to school and if my class is centered on something and they need to make up a test, they can come into my room. I have some computers that they can use and they can work on things when they come into my classroom. Um, it's really kind of up to the teacher. Uh, some teachers have no final. If you have a 90 percent or higher during the semester, that's not my class. Um, but lots of teachers have different ways that they have developed to help students. Your student just has to figure out how that teacher is going to end up helping them. Um, time management is so difficult, right? Our ninth graders, this part of their brain has not really developed yet. <laughs> And they can't make evaluations or long-term decisions yet. It's, it's a part of their biology. They just haven't gotten there yet. So they are gonna need the most help in learning how, well, this is due tomorrow, and this is due at the end of the week, and this is due in two weeks. And how am I going to divide up my time to make sure all of that happens? Um, I don't know if, um, I try talking to them about, well, where do you go hang out with your friends? hanging out with my friends right now, right? <laughs> right? Um, or I will ask them, hey, did you guys see that new TV show? Mm, no, they didn't. See, when we were going to high school, everyone kind of had a common language of, oh, did you see that show last night? Must see TV, right? They don't have that same kind of, everyone's doing the same thing at the same time. So, um, but maybe you know what works best for them, putting more money on their iTunes, Maybe it is letting them buy another app or so many minutes um, playing some violent video game. Um, whatever it is that's gonna motivate your student, you, you know them best. And your teachers, their teachers might not know what motivates them best. So if you have something in particular, you can contact the teacher and let them know this is what they really work well with. Um, my kids, my, I have a son who's four, he has five stitches right now, so it's a long story. Uh, can I just give you a round of applause for making it this far? Because <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm gonna make it. Um, my daughter is in second grade at Travis, and I know what motivates her. She likes being timed. If I let her do, if I let her take two hours for her homework, she would take all two hours. But if I say, okay, I'm setting a timer for five minutes. How much can you get done in five minutes? That works for her. Now, I don't know if that will work for her in 10 years, but hopefully I'm gonna stay connected with her that I, I do know what is working with her in 10 years. Um, so just some common sense things about reading. I see a lot of kids reading on their phone. Reading on your phone or reading on any backlit device is a harder strain on your eyes, so if they're really struggling with that. Um, a lot of times my students wanna buy eBooks, which I'm totally for, I can totally understand. I read a lot of my books uh, digitally, but if we're studying books, it can be a difficulty on our eyes. 
We process differently when we're reading on a screen. A lot of times it goes slower. Um, we don't interact with the material as much. So just some things for you to consider as you are getting to the place where you're talking more about what they need to do. Pop it. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, that, that uh, accountability factor of rewarding and also um, limiting time, uh, it's very important, very important. Um, any distractions during the weekday need to be taken away from kids. Um, I know uh, video games are a huge distraction, TV, even activities. If your child's involved in four sports because they've been in four sports their whole life, you need to cut back a little bit in high school. Um, uh, why are they in four sports? Like, what is the, the precursor to that? Are, is it, it will stress them out. You'll notice they'll start getting stressed because time is of the essence. They should be doing anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes of homework per class a night, depending on the level of class. If your child's in a lot of honors classes, um, IB program, AP classes, um, they'll start, I believe, in 10th grade at most of the sites. Um, but when they get into those level of classes, they're gonna have to pick and choose what they wanna be involved in. Take notes, even if it's not required, write down questions to ask teacher in class to help comprehension. Read for pleasure. This is the biggest thing. Now, I'm an English teacher, so this is my caveat here. The more a kid reads, the more it will expand their ability to write and their vocabulary. It's the number one thing you can do for your kid. Find books they want to read. Don't go for the Shakespeare anthology. I don't read that, okay? If they like to read John Green books, get them every John Green book and have them read it. Um, whatever they like and enjoy reading. The more we get kids reading, the better it is for them. Accountability, no excuses. Have your kids be responsible for themselves and don't blame you, that's over. That can't happen anymore. Sometimes in high school, kids get very dramatic and like to pit things against their parents. Um, know that you've got a teacher who's on your side, a teacher who's gonna sit down with you. And sometimes teachers can say things to kids that you can't which is a real wonderful gift. I know I appreciate the people in my life that can talk to my children and my children will listen to them. And they say the same thing I say, but they listen to them. Um, extracurricular activities are not an excuse for falling behind. If your printer explodes, email your assignment to the teacher or save it on. Um, I would really suggest Google Drive. Our district is really headed towards that. Um, I know I just showed all my freshmen how to use it, how to create folders in it. It's a really powerful tool and I would strongly suggest um, using it. If you don't have a computer or the internet, it is available um, at school. All of our school have Chromebook carts, we've got computer labs. It just means your child might have to work during lunch, they might have to come in early, stay late, but those opportunities are there. Um, I also encourage all my students to find a study buddy, not a friend. Okay, but find someone in class that you can work with when you don't understand something. Maybe a phone number you can get of someone or an email you can get so you can contact them. And if all else fails, keep calm. Freshman year is tough. It is. I'm telling you that. I've had 19 freshman years. They're tough. But your kid will get through it. And if you hit a road bump, I'm going to give you some things at the end. And we're back to Mrs. Dixon. All right, so um, I know many minutes ago, so you probably forgot all of this information. Um, I wanted to give you tonight some links and some places that you can go to to kind of help you out. I can't stress how important the school websites are. I sometimes get frustrated with elementary school websites um, because there's so much going on at elementary school, it's really hard for them to keep it updated. And because they have a smaller staff, it can sometimes be hard to find somebody who's really technology proficient and has the time to become a webmaster and all those things. But the websites for the high schools are just a wealth of information. Um, and each of our high schools has a wonderfully laid out site. There's different things in different places for all of them. I have provided links at the end of this presentation for all of these things. So if you're kind of unsure about where to go or how to get through that, then it, it, it'll be there for you. And this is also available, this whole presentation is online. Any links that we talk about are on the handout and they're also online. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Google Drive. Amanda had mentioned it, but Google has come out with some wonderful apps for education. Um, and it's kind of changing, I think, the way that education is going to be delivered and the way that kids are going to be held accountable. Um, I use Google Classroom in, my, in all five of my classes. 
Um, and it is amazing because every day I go on and I kind of summarize what we did, I mention what the homework is. It's also where I post important writing assignments or um, right now a lot of my freshmen are turning in answers on Google Forms. And what this lets me do is it lets me see, first of all, are they proficient with the technology? Are they comfortable with using new technologies? Because I think that's what's going to be really important for them in the future. Also, um, it's really easy for me to sort. And I can see who's providing the same exact answers as their friends. So it's one more way that I know I'm holding them accountable to make sure that they're doing their own work. Um, and it's more legible. So yay. Um, Edmodo is still used by some of our um, teachers in the district, and it's a great resource as well. It's kind of like Google Classroom, um, and I think in the next few years, we might see it phased out a little bit as our district becomes more and more entrenched with Google. Um, the downside of Google Classroom is that it doesn't have a link for, for parents to log into it. You would have to have your son or daughter log into their account and show you what's on their Google Classroom. But, oh my goodness, just the information that I can so easily post throughout the day um, it's one of the ways that we are really flipping classrooms, providing videos for students to watch at home. I know a lot of my science teachers on my campus have been doing this, posting videos uh, that they want kids to see, and then in class they're spending time discussing it and working with the material and really understanding. So it's a lot of fantastic things that are going on in education. It's totally different than when we went to school, but a lot of it's really amazing, and I think it's connecting with the students. Um, ARIES is such an important tool. I sometimes get a little bit frustrated with second grade because I'm not entirely sure how she's doing until I, I see the spelling test come home. That's about what I get, right? And this has a check mark on it. Um, so until a parent conferences, I kind of, I, I hope she's doing all right. Um, I assume because I'm not hearing from the teacher. But Aries, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know how they're doing. Um, one of the things that is, Parents will log on to Aries and ask me, well, I don't understand why my son or daughter is failing this. And I point to the assignment and I say, this is why. Um, now, sometimes the teacher can offer some insight. This is what I see in class, or this is what's happening. But really, the expert in your child is you. And having that conversation with them about, why do you think this is happening? Is it that you don't have enough time to get things done? Are, are we not building enough? time out on the weekends for you to get caught up. What can I do to support you? It's not in um, my slides, but I think one of the biggest things in your toolbox is empathy. And it always has been, right? As parents, when, when, they, when they bring them home from the hospital and they cry, we take care of it. We feed them, we diaper them, we bathe them. We do everything that they need us to do for them in order for them to be happy. And I think sometimes as, as we, they get older, it can be harder to know exactly what those things are that they're going to need. So just developing, keeping up that relationship. Um, and sometimes it's hard because teenagers are, whew, sometimes they're rough. And they go through those, those mood swings. But if you can maintain a relationship, high school's going to end. Your relationship with your students um, will, will last a lifetime. Um, I also have some links for important information about A through G requirements. This has been a bigger push in our district um, that we want more kids to be aware of. If you drop that certain class your freshman or sophomore year, what does that mean in terms of meeting the requirements to get into college? We want to make sure that everyone is totally aware and that everybody who wants to go to college has the opportunity to do that. Um, community colleges, and I know that they're maybe not everyone's favorite or dream school, but they do offer a lot of benefits for some of our students. Some of our students who maybe need a little bit more practice before they get to a four-year university or students who, you know, that math class, they just weren't cognitively ready for that math class when they got there and they really struggled with it. And sometimes that can mean, well, they're not quite ready for a four-year or they didn't um, score enough on their placement test. Community college is, is not necessarily a bad place to go. It can be really helpful for a lot of students. Wait. I already did high school, right? But now you have to do it again. Um, this year, I am taking second grade. Again, it's been a while. Not sure I know second grade math so well, but um, one of the best things that we can do for our sons and daughters is, hey, I can't do this for you, but I can do it with you. 
I'm going through it with you as you are are struggling. Um, sometimes I'm just talking to members of uh, my own community and well, I didn't know that about education. I didn't know that Common Core was doing this. I didn't know that those kinds of questions were being asked. Um, I think one of the best things you can do for yourself is to be educated about education and know what's being expected, what some of the trends are going on. We're almost to the end, but things can happen um, in the course of a school year. And these are some really great resources if you are curious about some educational trends or why certain teachers are maybe trying certain things or what the ideas and philosophies are behind that. Um, another great tool that sometimes our students overlook are public libraries. Because they have computers that they can go, they have nice quiet rooms, they're open quite frequently, um, more hours than our school library. Sometimes I will have students who um, they think that they're getting their own copy of the book and then they don't get it, but they can make it to the public library and they can get a copy of the book. So the, there's links to all of that. It's okay. Okay. Um, so some, again, some online tools that I have found have been really helpful to students. Maybe you guys know about Quizlet. I love using Quizlet in my classroom. Um, there are some features there that are, are really helpful for my auditory learners, for my visual learners, or different tests that they can take to kind of review material. It's kind of like an online flashcard set. Um, they have an app, and so if your son or daughter has a device, they can use that more often. Um, I would suggest going to the College Board, especially if your son or daughter is thinking about taking an AP class. They can kind of give an overview of what the requirements are for that class, what kind of expectations they'll have, what the tests will um, like. The Khan Academy, I've used this with my own daughter in terms of math tutorials because math is not my strongest point um, and Common Core is really throwing me for a loop. Um, why is 8 plus 7 15? I just know it is. Uh, I'm not sure how to explain that further but um, Khan Academy has some really good online learning tools for you. Um, YouTube. And I know sometimes they go on YouTube and the stuff they find on YouTube is not, it's not okay. But there are some really good resources. Um, Amanda mentioned John Green. Um, he has a wonderful uh, YouTube library called Crash Course. They have videos about chemistry, world history, government, science, politics, literature. There's all kinds of um, YouTube videos to help students out. Because I'm an English teacher and I focus on writing, writing is really important to me. I think it's one of the things that students struggle most with when they get into college, being ready for college level research and writing. Um, these are some things to really help them out. EasyBib will help them make a work cited or a bibliography. The OWL at Purdue will help them format their papers exactly how their um, teachers want them. Google, Scho Google Scholar is a really great resource, a free online resource that kind of um, will supplement things like JSTOR and, and research for academic purposes. Um, if you have a smartphone and a QR reader, this is a link to a document of all of these links. So not only is the presentation posted on um, the district website, but if you use this QR code, it would send you to a Google Doc that has a whole, all of these sites, links um, on it. And we'll leave that up. Yeah. Yeah. We'll leave that up. So I know Mr. Green has to go. Did you want to do no, robot? I, I just want to, yeah. Do the lot. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, but I, I have to say, this is the first I've seen this presentation, and I've heard a lot of things about this, and that's why I signed up to do tonight because oh, okay. I wanted to see your presentation. <laughs> um, I, I want you to know that you guys really encapsulated the the freshman experience so well. Good. I was super yeah. impressed. 